Hello, Pod Posse. It's design time with Flora Lee from the floor up. And I am your podcast host, Lindsay the Stager or Lindsay Wilson. Today, I get the privilege to interview my friend and realtor, Melanie Jones. Hello, Mel. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you. Hi, I'm Lindsay Wilson, and you're watching the Design Time from the Floor Up video podcast. Melanie works for Hodge and Kittrell. Yes, I work for Hodge and Kittrell Sotheby's International Realty, um, a network of over 25,000 realtors worldwide. I love that. And when I met you, you were working for Hometown Realty. That's right. Yep. But, but, but no longer. No, I switched. So as Raleigh is growing, uh, I began to look at what my assets were. And I grew up moving all around the country. I've lived overseas a few times. I'm not from Raleigh, but I've lived here 18 years. And I thought one of my biggest assets is a national network and I need to be affiliated with a company that also has a national network and it's been fantastic. Global. Do we call that global? Well, they have, um, they are 25,000 worldwide agents. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You needed needed like a bigger boat, right? I needed a bigger boat. In fact, if you go on my Instagram today, I posted an amazing video from our affiliate in the Bahamas just to sort of warm everyone up on this weary I love dreary that. January. It's weird. It's like 70. It it's is. dreary, but it's like 70 and I'm I'm okay with that cuz I yeah. would rather it be I would rather it be balmy and not cold. Anyway, before we get into all of the things because I love talking to you. I have to clean something up. Do you know who Glennon Doyle is? I do. In fact, we had her I was her first paid speaking engagement Shut at Women Up. At a women's event at St. Michael's Episcopal Church that myself and Susan Roundtree um, organized, I think she was our third, second or third speaker, and we were the first time she was a paid contracted speaker. This is so perfect. This is why I don't ever want to rehearse anything, because I didn't know you were going to say that. You didn't know what I was going to say. No. But I want to send an apology out to Glennon Doyle because I love her and I listen to her podcast regularly. It's called We Can Do Hard Things. And she calls her pod listeners the pod squad. Yes. I call mine the pod posse. And the last podcast that I did, I kept calling everybody the pod squad as if I was Glennon Doyle, which I do not claim to be at all. So I just wanted to say, sorry, Glennon. I will go back to calling my listeners the pod posse. You keep your pod squad. The end. Is pod squad trademarked? No, but I just didn't want to take that away from her. That's so yeah. good. Yep. And, pod and squad I, is good. Pod squad is good. It, it, it rolls off your tongue easier. So I yes. have to like put up a place, like a sign that says posse. Say posse, Lindsay, not squad. Well, before there were podcasts, there were blogs, right? So everything, right. and she did Momastery, and her group was called The Monkeys. Um, and I mean, our event sold out in 90 minutes, I think. Yep. Wow. Yep. She's we reached, so awesome. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I know this because when I was living in Australia and pregnant with Daisy, I had a blog. It was called The Pregnant Pause, and I called my readers my bloggies. So I love it. Well, I used to be a blogger myself, too. I'd had one titled Not Your Preacher's Wife. I love that. Why would you have it titled that, Mel? Well, because I am married to a minister, and when I tell people that, when once they pick their jaw up off the floor... (laughs) They say, you don't, you don't really strike me as a preacher's wife. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I happen to fall in love with the man who was called to be a minister. So that's how and we I, got there. I, I met you because when I moved to Raleigh nine years ago, I went back to St. Michael's because at the time I was brokenhearted. My life was at a 
sunken cul-de-sac of a place. It was bad, and I needed something to believe in. And I went back to the church that my grandparents helped build. And lo and freaking behold, (laughs) there's your husband, Greg Jones, telling me in a humorous sermon everything that I always needed to hear on the Sunday, sitting next to my dad. Who I thought was your boyfriend. I know. (laughs) (laughs) For like a year, remember? I was like, well, that's a January-July relationship. Right? And it's my dad. And mom doesn't go to church, not because she doesn't want to, but just because she's not physically well, wanting to, able, whatever. And so Daisy would be in, uh, what is it? Uh, Daycare. Sunday school. Sunday school. Thank you. Um, And then, I mean, how did we like... I don't even think that I put together that you were a realtor before we were friends or yeah. what was it? What came first, the realtor or the egg? I don't really, I know, yeah, I, know, I have no idea. That's like, I love the saying, why worry whether the glass is half empty or half full because it can be refilled. Right. Just drink it. Yeah. Yep. So you and I have gotten to do some stagings together. And in very have, different markets, too. I think that's really know. interesting, right? Well, that's what I want you to talk about today, because for once, I'm going to listen and not <laughs> cut you off, but I want to hear today from you, the realtor, not the stager, nothing to do with design, but I want to know, Mel, what's going on? Tell me what we can all expect in 2023's market. Hit it in in the triangle. I will speak to that because that's where I'm. I'm feel I'm the you know an expert. We are a growth market. Just yesterday, the National Association of Realtors said that Raleigh is the third fastest growing city in the country. So, what does that mean for real estate? That means it's not being hurt by high interest rates, by looming inflation, all these things. It almost seems like the newscasters want us to be in a recession. You know, you hear this all the time. Here's the deal with real estate. We have 65 people a day moving to the Triangle area. They all need a place to live. I mean, you can't can't drive down a road where an apartment building isn't going up. I know. the, The money it takes to build an apartment building isn't pocket change. There are investors around the country and around the world that are putting money into our area. And what that means is they've done a lot more research than I could ever do to say, wow, this place is only getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. So what that means for our real estate market as individuals or as professionals is that we have high demand. We still have a shortage of inventory which means prices are holding pretty heavy. We are not seeing the craziness of the last spring market where there were sight unseen offers, $100,000 deposits that were non-refundable, 25 exactly people post competing. That I just put up. Yeah, it's it's that's over. That is over. Having said that, it's I've heard it labeled a tornado market a little bit, which I really like because when a tornado goes through a neighborhood, tragically, some people lose everything and the house right next door is totally fine. And no one knows how or why, right? I mean, obviously better construction, whatever. But the same (laughs) thing holds true in trying to sell your house. Why did the neighbor's house have 85 showings and three offers and sell in a day? And yours is sitting on the market. People are more informed than they have ever have been. They, they, they know, they have access to what the neighbor's house closed for. And that's not secret information anymore, right? So people want to pay good value and they will. So it has never been more important to have your house absolutely bestest ready be, you know, before you have one person come into that house, before you put one picture up, you have to have it in the best condition you possibly can. Minor repairs, staging, 
you know, everything, put your best foot forward. If you really, really, really want a dream job, you're not going to go in in your old pants. Right. (laughs) If you want a dream guy, you're not going to be not wearing your mascara. Right. Well, you might get extensions. Yeah. Or maybe (laughs) other things. (laughs) Yeah. No, but we always say... If you want to make a good, good, you have one chance to make a first impression. That's right. Always, you know, like that's That's right. But let's talk about, because what do you think? Well, first of all, I want to say how grateful are we that we work in this industry. In this area, in this industry. Right. Mm -hmm. We're always going to be needed. Yeah. How validating. Thank you, Jesus. Well, right. And I will say in the spring market, it was very hard to guide my clients to making the right decision. I mean, we were making some of these crazy offers. I was helping a client relocate from the Upper Peninsula in Michigan, which is like the hinterland. And she had gone to NC State 20 years ago and was like, what do you mean Carrie has, what What are you talking about? This is ridiculous. This is not what it was like when I left here. I said, it's not what it was like when I moved here. You know, we moved here 18 years ago from Richmond and before that New York City. And the nicest restaurant was in a strip mall up Creedmoor Road. It was, what? Yep. It was called Finn's. Ashley Christensen, our you know, James Beard award winner was in a restaurant downtown called Vin, but she did not own it. She was simply the chef. Wow. Yeah. And that, you know, so those are, those are pretty big changes for what has happened. Um, You know, we've named a new director of the art museum a few years ago. She was actually a high school classmate of mine. I mean, Raleigh is on the map and I think the people who are attracted here are go-getters. They want a high quality of life. They want to work hard and they want to play hard. I love that. Yeah. And I hear that all the time because I'm married to an old Raleigh boy who has lived here his whole life. Mm-hmm. He's about to be 43 on Monday. Happy birthday, Mike. Yeah. Um, and he will point out things to me and he'll be like, do you understand that where we live in the nice part of Hayes Barton inside the Beltline used to be a colored community that was not recognized as being as sought out as it is now? Well, my favorite part actually is um, Wake Forest Road. Our friend Mm -hmm. Mike Ferguson grew up here and he said, oh yeah, I remember when they made it two lanes. They just changed the lines. They didn't make it any wider. (laughs) Oh my God, that's crazy. Which is why we all hold our breath. Like, you know, in my, all these big SUVs, I'll hold my breath and hope that, um, you know, that the car in the lane next to me doesn't text and drive and go over the road. (laughs) Well, I think that, you know, I, I always say this, but I remember the day that the record stopped. Mm. It was like, it was like June 2nd. That's my mom's birthday. That's how I know when it was, when the, the halt of the craziness of the spring market. And I, I love this story. I staged a home that was a fine home. It wasn't like out of character for being something amazing, but I staged this home that got 311 over asking. That's amazing. It's crazy. And I, obviously we all work together doing this. I think that I had a little something to do with that, but that all came to a screeching halt in June. Yeah. I feel like, um, yes, homes are still selling for over asking, which is great, but not that much. And I feel like, and this is what I want to hear your side of, do you think that, are you with more listings or are there people buying? Because what I noticed in the latter part of last year was that people were dwelling instead of selling and loving what they had and making that better, which is when I started most of my stage to lives. Yep. So what do you think is happening in the market versus, or is it a seller's market or buyer's market? Who's doing what? It's definitely balanced out more. I mean, we were in a seller's market where you had- That's the word I was looking for. It's balanced. It's balanced. Yeah. So again, back to that spring market, 
you know, non-refundable deposits with six figures, um, waiving appraisal. If it didn't appraise, you had to cut and you were coming up with a gap, no repairs. All of that had to be signed in the contract and delivered before you step foot in the house. I mean, I, I, that, that Michigan buyer, we won on our 13th offer sight unseen. I hadn't even been in the house. Oh my God. Well, That's crazy. well over asking price. And again, what happens in real estate is that, you know, we sell this house for a hundred th- or buy this house for a hundred thousand over asking. And then the neighbor goes, well, I didn't think I wanted to move, but I bought this house 10 years ago. I could walk away with a lot okay. of proceeds. Yeah. Like yeah. life-changing money right? Downsize yeah. or buy my beach house. And then of course we have the pandemic and you didn't have to go to your office, you know, eight to eight to six every day. We realized we actually can work from home. We are relative adults and can be disciplined. And so people said, you know what, I'm going to have an apartment in Raleigh and I'm going to move to my beach house. So you saw that a little bit. I'd like to see that a little more. Again, our biggest problem is inventory. We have buyers that were smushed to the either side of the pandemic. And I think now they're cautious because of interest rates, but there are people ready to buy. And and as you well know, um, you know, re, re, redoing a home hasn't ironed out either. I mean, windows are still 30 weeks on order. Ah, tell me about it. Right. Oh, that's right. You're in the middle. Don't even get me started. Oh my God, Mel. And we are in such a mess, mess, mess. Yeah. And here's what I would like to also address in this convo that has nothing to do with anything because why would it? Um, (laughs) since the pandemic, you cannot get over asking your half assness, half acidness. Well, people are smart. I mean, you know, Z- Zillow, which is a bane of realtors' existence, provided information to people. The way people buy a house, right? When my parents were buying a house, their realtor picked them up. And in fact, there wasn't even buyer's agents. There were only listing agents. And the listing agent would show the buyer house a house and be like, you want it? You would have to go to the agency in a notebook right? Like an infamous notebook. And they'd say, these are the homes you can buy. That, you know, I don't even know when buyer's agents came into being. I've I've been a realtor for eight years, but it's not that long ago. And so I used to say, gosh, all you needed was, you know, you needed um, a pack of cigarettes and and a car. And that's that's what realtors (laughs) used to do. So, right. And now, And I think it's great. And now you can buy a house online because you can shop when you have insomnia because of your move at two o'clock in the morning. That's right. And I think, and I think that's helpful. I think having everybody be educated on the facts makes everybody better before the deal even starts. I don't want a surprise in the middle of the deal. I want people. Now that doesn't mean people don't say, I don't care. I want it. They fall in love with the house and they pay what no one else will pay. So my, my tagline is a home is your nest and your nest egg. And they have to be in balance. I mean, you're spending every single day there. I spend more money on my bed than on my car. Right. Right. Because sleep is super important. I want it to be really, 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 really good. And I'm spending eight hours a day there. Right. Well, I wish I were. I have insomnia now. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm hoping to, you know, I'm hoping to do that. And I feel like it's the same thing. If a house ticks every single box in a buyer's, you know, wish list and they can afford it, they will pay. Many people will overpay if it's done well. Why do you have insomnia? I'm 51 and three quarters. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, this job too, this job is because you're, tur- because you're an Aries like me, right. Yes. And you're turning 52 in April and I'm turning 48 yeah. and holy moly. Yeah. 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 Holy crap on a cracker. I know there's, there's just a lot going on. And I, for about the past year or so, I've been saying time is nigh. My oldest daughter started college this year, which was super great and exciting, and she's happy. But like, time's running out, 
And, and the amount of... What do you mean? What do you want to do? Well, I just, it's time's important. I want to spend, I'm doing lots and lots of things. I've always done a million different things. You know, if you want something done, give it to a busy woman. And I, I firmly (laughs) believe in that. Um, and I'm really enjoying my job. Like I love spending time becoming better at my job, whether that's, I love that. Yeah. Whether that's talking to a realtor in Scottsdale to get some great ideas, shout out to Jen Shoemaker. She's amazing. Um, she started a global health club business and then got into real estate. But, um, you know, so there are a lot of realtors who get into this job as a, a second career and, yeah tapping into what we did first, right? So Mm -hmm. just like, you know, you put the home on stage because you used to be on stage, you know what a performance requires. Like, it's not a coincidence that you get a home performance ready because you know what it took to take an individual performance ready. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like that. What would you say, like, if my theater slash staging background has helped me with my success in staging a home and putting that production together, what would you say brought you to being such a good realtor and enjoying what you do most importantly? What, how, what, what, what happened in your background that brought you to this good place? Well, I have a, I have a few reasons. One, my dad was in the Navy, so we moved every two years. My mother is a saint and she made it an adventure. She always talked about where we were going and how that was going to be incredible and made home where she made home wherever it was we were living. So that I'm super grateful. Um, Again, I was always the new kid who had to walk in the room and say, Hey, I'm Melanie and, and, and make a friend fast because I was only yeah. going to be there for two years. Oh, yeah. So, um, so what are you saying that you like to help these new people create the home and make it an adventure like your mom taught you? I get to know people quickly. That's what I'm saying. And then I can help them achieve whatever it is they want. Right. But it's because of you and your sparkly personality that they can trust you and that you make it fun. Because we wouldn't be talking if you if I didn't trust you or if I didn't think that you were fun. Yeah. And then, you know, and thirdly, I was a college athlete. And, you know, I think it's really funny I'm still talking about that. It's my 30th college reunion. But you got to do the- You can always talk about it. You will yeah. always be a college That's athlete, right. Mel. That's right. And so the preparation it takes, you know, I people, my- I've coached a million teams and I always say, um, you know, everyone loves to say there is no I in team. And I say, but there is in win. And so, Ugh. and the reason what ah. I mean is that every person involved in the transaction really needs to do their absolute best in order to create a strong team. And what I start. At- That's it. That's the nugget. There is an I in win. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm, that's what I'm taking away with me today. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. We can just, you know, cut. That's right. Cut the interview right there. That's all I needed to hear. Yeah. But that's so good. I love that. Yeah. I'm sorry that I cut you off. Keep going. What no. Way? Um, yeah, I just I I think it's really important. I say to everybody at the beginning of a transaction too, you know, we're on the we're all on the same team trying to transfer ownership of 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 a home from the seller to the buyer. And we really need to keep that in mind because inevitably things come up, whether it's a financing issue or a job change or, you know, some problem in the house that needs fixing that no one had any idea um, that occurred. Um, And there's there's always a solution. There's always a solution. Sometimes that means dissolving, but I have only had one One deal fall through. What do you mean? I've only had one deal in my career that did not make it to the closing table. Why not? Why not? The buyer backed out after giving us $40,000. The Design Time from the Flora podcast is sponsored by Florally, your premier source for designer-inspired floors.
Use Floralee's live chat with real human beings to answer your flooring questions and even book a free in-home consultation. What, what, I mean, was it like major that they walked with $40,000 without their $40,000? Um, he was buying it as an investment property. So I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. My, I mean, my sellers were, were frustrated not to sell, but they also got now get rental income from it. They ended up renting it out and walked away with $40,000, you know, for nothing. And uh, yeah, it's my go-to saying that everything happens at the perfect time. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, I have lost many homes that I've put in offers for, but then I have to retell myself, well, it's because that wasn't the right one. Yeah. And then the next one was better than the one that I lost the offer on and had my whole heart and, you know, mind set on. Well, and you get smarter as you go. Right. I mean, you, you every you, if you learn from your experiences, you'll be better down the road, whether that means you'll throw another 10 grand at your offer price because you're sick of losing or, yeah. you know, I, I mean, again, when you're talking about a 30 year mo mortgage, a, a, a $10,000 difference, I think, comes out to like. Six, sixteen dollars a month. Oh, come on. Something. I mean, it's something crazy, like it's something that's not life-changing. I'm not saying $10,000 isn't a lot of money. That's a lot of money. No, I know. No, 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 no. But know, over but a 30, you, right, uh, right. Over a 30 year mortgage. Oprah like, says, okay. Oprah says, when you know better, you do better. Right. Yep. So yesterday I was at the Glenwood Teeter and you know, you're always going to run into somebody there. And yep. I ran into, um, a realtor friend and, uh, she's never used me for staging and oh. she's a friend of mine. And that's because, you know, like she even said in our five minute, that's where I ran into you a couple yeah, that's right. weeks ago. That's right. You run into everybody there. Um, she, in our like five minute or less conversation, she was like, you know, are you still staging? I do it myself. That's what I'm bringing into this. So Mel, I noticed in your background of a living room that you have really good flanking lamps. They're orange, which is a very bold, brave color. I love that you've brought that in. It's my favorite color. Oranges? Yes. I love that. My best friend, Salem, that's her favorite color too. She was the dance captain at Beauty and the Beast. Nice. Anyway, um, why do you hire a stager? Because it looks like you have good taste and it looks like you sure know how to pull a room together to make it photo ready. Well, thank you. Um, You're welcome. Taste is subjective though. So, I mean, I have lavender walls and an orange, Ooh. you know, flanking lamps and I'm getting ready to get some tiger pillows if they ever get finished. I mean, what I like isn't what every, what I like is not what everybody likes. And we're not, we are not in the business of making a magazine we're in the business of selling right. a house we are so making there's a difference neutral, which means there's marketable. a difference between right there's a difference between living and selling it's the same with repairs right i mean nobody lives the way they sell okay fine but knowing that you know mm -hmm. the difference you're not going to bring in orange lamps and tiger pillows okay so why don't you just do it yourself and bring in neutral pillows and white lamps well, it goes back to the, there is no I in team, but there is in win. So I want, I want all of my, I could, I'm a photographer, essentially. Yeah, you are. I mean, I yeah. could take all my own photos too. You know, I, I, I don't believe in that. I, I believe that I hire experts who know what they're doing, who do staging in, you know, day in, day out, who do measuring day in, day out, who do photography day in, day out. I use a marketing department. I want, I want the best in the business to be taking care of each part of my transaction so that my clients get the best results. The end. Good. So, yeah. um, yep. And with that being said, I can also say there's a little good, well, there's a little good cop, bad cop too, in the sense <laughs> of, 
I can, I can, I mean, I do see some clients going like, oh God, oh God, oh God, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much. And so being able to go through and say, well, if you want to put your absolute best foot forward, these are the 94 things that you should do. <laughs> You know, and, and be able to help them through their to-do list. Um, but it's easier and it keeps the relationship better for you and your seller if correct. you bring in a stager correct. who is the professional part of right. that. Like you're right. the realtor and then you bring in another professional to do this part. Right. And then yep. they're not mad at you because you said take down the cross that's over your bed, even though you're not the preacher's wife, you know, all that. Right. But it, right. It, you're, you know, right. it starts this snowball effect. If you start telling them to take down the cross over their bed, it's like you have to explain so much according. Right. And it goes back to your husband, your style, your way of right. living. Whereas if a stager says we need to cater to the Muslims and Jews, then that's much more understood. It's much better well, we don't even have to talk religion. I mean, in here, if you have, you know, an NC State Wolfpack oh my hanging God. up and a Tar Heel wants to buy the house, I mean, deal breaker. I've had I'm, deal breaker. Yeah. So I've I've removed I've removed grill covers. Yeah. I've even hidden, um, you know, bottle openers in the drawer. Yeah. Um, cause buyers will open that. <laughs> I mean, it sounds funny, but again, part of it's an emotional decision. We give buyers all the information they can to make a decision. Obviously, you know, it might be the top of some budgets and the bottom of the other, you know, everyone, everybody brings a different set of criteria to a transaction. And especially like you were saying in the triangle, there is no place in the yeah. country that is as crazy about their sports teams as right here. I That's always right. say, it doesn't matter how amazing the backsplash and the brand new quartz countertops are if we have a Tar Heel man cave. <laughs> because the wife is going to fall in love with the kitchen and she's going to drag her husband to the open house and they're going to see everything. And then he's going to come into the Tar Heel man cave and he's going to be like, I can't buy a Tar Heels home. I'm a dookie. And they're That's out. Right. And it's a deal breaker and there's no offer and it's over. I know. I know. I actually have a friend who's an interior designer and a very large Carolina fan. She and her husband both went there and she, she painted their TV room. Carolina blue. Kind of Duke. Oh, no, actually it's like Duke blue. Ooh. And her husband has a real hard time watching. Games. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. My dad is a Tar Heel. So is my husband, but dad bought a Duke blue car. And I'm like, hmm. Mm. And when I told him that, he was like, oh, no. And I'm like, you, you didn't. Now he doesn't like yeah. it. That's so funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So um, I hate it when you and I, as smart business women, know how to put the I and win and what it takes as a team for you to get what you're trying to get, which is the success of buying and selling a home. How about when you see people that don't understand this concept and putting their best foot forward, trying to impress the boyfriend or the girlfriend or whatever, they put up pictures that they've obviously taken on their own cell phone with an unmade bed and a full laundry basket at the bottom of it. What is that? I ask you. That's money on the table. I mean, you've just, you've, you know, if you don't have time to put your laundry away to put before you put your house on the market, buyers may begin to wonder, well, do they, do they care about their home? I know. Have they, have they had pest service quarterly to make sure there's no problems? You just don't, you unanswered questions roll like a snowball and you want to provide all information openly, honestly, and in the best packaging possible. What so, happens when you encounter a seller who folds their arms and says, what do you mean you're going to bring in a stager? I just had an interior decorator do this house 15 years ago. What's wrong with how it is? Well, first of all, 15 years is like dog years and I style, know. right? I want I to know. say to that so person, did you hear what you just said? Okay, fine. One. Two, again, we don't, 
the way you live is not the way you buy. The way, right? Yeah, it's not the way you sell. Or, or the way you sell either. Right, exactly. So um, we've got to make the house ready for the future buyer. And so they can envision themselves in the house. That's why you take down the personal pictures. You take down the sports paraphernalia, all what those about things. That, what about that seller who you may lose your listing because they're annoyed that you're bringing in somebody to tell them how to show it? Well, I pay, I mean, I pay for the consultation, right? And the so staging when they, the staging consultation, right. and when they, you know, if they decide not to do it, I try and explain to them it's, you've got your best chance to sell the house the first 30 days on the market really in the first week in the, in the past 18 months, it's been like, you know, the first seven days on market. Yeah. So why wouldn't you do absolutely everything to get the most people in the house and wanting to make an offer? Because again, all offers are confidential. So you're, you're playing Texas (laughs) Hold'em. Right. If you can get 20 people at the table, the pot in the middle is going to be a lot bigger. And it's so smart when a realtor decides that as part of your brand and as part of your white glove service that you are going to pay for the consultation. You're going to have the stager come in. If they don't bite, you know, I always say we can lead a seller to staging, but you can't make them drink. If they don't want to go further, Mm -hmm. then they're hurting themselves. But what about when the would you what do you think about the realtor paying for the staging just because you know that it's going to give you a better return? I I haven't, luckily, uh, most of the people I sell with have been open to staging and, and understand because we do the, you know, the explaining up front. Um, so I haven't been in that position, but it would definitely be something I would consider. Um, Yeah, because let's say that you are, um, I guess maybe it gives you like more leverage with your percentage. If you say, not only am I paying for the consultation, but just let me pay for the staging too, because I know how it needs to be and we need to just do it. And I am willing to make that investment because you know how imperative it is. Yeah, that would be something to consider. Um, I mean, yeah, I, you know, it, it is beneficial for both. It's more beneficial for the seller. Um, well, I mean, um, just to like change the subject for just a sec, if your oldest daughter, that's Coco, she's yeah. started college at Carolina. Yeah. Yay. Then, Yay. then who are your other children? I have a 17-year-old daughter, Anna, who's a junior um, in high school, and Chaney is a freshman in high school. Oh, my God. I know. It's crazy. I'm looking at you, and you're so cute, and I can't believe, first of all, that you're about to be 53, but I can't believe that you have three mature older crazy. daughters. What? I know. It's, I know. It's crazy. Because yeah, Chaney me- did driver's ed over Christmas break. Oh, my God. Where's that name Chaney from? It is from, it's a family name um, from actually Cheney, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, small town. Yep, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's it like a day in your life with the realtor aspect? Like, what are you doing? Are you like writing thank you notes on Tuesday? Are you like driving around on Wednesday? How does it go? What do you do? Well, I really, um, I wake up and I say my gratitudes. Um you know, grateful to be alive for another day, grateful for my job, my health, my family. Um, That's good. I, Everybody should do yeah. that. Yeah. It's great. Before my heat feet, before my feet hit the floor. Before your heat. Um, so yeah, <laughs> before I fired up for the day. And um, yeah, I try and connect to at least two people a day, either through a note or a phone call or I mean, not that I do podcasts on a regular basis, but, you know, doing, doing some sort of interaction, I check the, the MLS, which is our lit multiple listing service, see what, you know, what's going on, like a stock, right? Just like a stock broker has their ticker up all the time. You want to see who listed like, what and who's, who who's listed pending? what? Was what the that, one that was listed that, last that, night under contract? What happened? 
Exactly. I do that too. I'm exactly. very interested in that. And I want to see mm-hmm. who staged what and why. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to stage? Like what part of the house is oh, your favorite? that's interesting, Mel. Um... You've stumped me. I'm, I'm oh. thinking about all the places. Um, I thought you were going to say bookshelves. Oh, I do love me you're a good shelfie. At that. Thank you. That's yeah. it. You're right. That's exactly right. I love me a shelfie. And do you know what I usually do? I always leave the shelfies for last. If I have a major shelfie, mm. like sometimes I have an entire wall of built-ins. And that's a lot. Yeah, because, it's a lot. Yeah, because first of all, you've got to take out the personal stuff. You've got to take out the fake ivy that they think looks good in the part that's above the shelfie, which is terrible, I know. Ivy, fake anything, is like a carnation. It's a filler. Sometimes a carnation can work by itself if you want simplicity and they're cut really short in little bud vases, like outside or something. But you never want a fake plant. I always get rid of the fake plants. Out. But a shelfie, I love seeing what I can do differently with a book. Can I fold the pages? Can I close it? Can I open it? Can I stand it up with the cover facing out because it's the color I'm looking for to bring into the room? So yes, thank you, Mel. That is what I love to do. Well, you also you also hunt while you're cleaning up the other parts of the house. You're like, oh wait, yeah, this thing that was chucked in the back of the bathroom drawer yeah. or whatever is like you know an awesome little nugget of color or whatever so thank that you i up... have been known to when there's like no art and i've got to fill up this wall and there's mm-hmm. got to be some color or else mm-hmm. we are in like beige hell i will yes. hang baseball hats that have no sports oh. on them <laughs> that's cute or i will have a basket of books where i've like fanned them out to give like a yeah. color because it, nobody cares that they're books but there's so much that you can do with books, which is why I always say, put away all this stuff, but leave me your dishes and your books. Because even if you're doing an outside table, if you do, like my husband always says, I love a good tipped bowl. A tipped bowl mm. next to two Pellegrino bottles tells yeah. a story of relaxing and having. We were here. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Enjoying the home. Yeah. Well, I, I am having a new couple new carpets delivered from Eatman's Carpets. Do you know um, Betty Nelson? I'd love her. She owns. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so I'm getting a chance in, oh boy, four days to pull everything out of my bedroom. And um, that's amazing. Yeah. And paint the walls, get the rug installed and. What Giddy color? What color are you painting Ugh. your walls? Well, I'm on my sixth. <laughs> That's terrible. I know. When it's your sample. own, you're like. Yes. I, um, <laughs> it is down to Ocean Air, Ooh. which both are Benjamin Moore, super, super light, light blue, um, either Ocean Air or Fantastic Blue or Fantasia Blue. Interesting. So, Let me ask and you it's something. Been very, what? It's funny because one, I don't really like blue. Um, and two, doing it in the winter, I keep thinking, oh, it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold if it's blue. And I'm like, wait, we're hot nine months of the year. <laughs> so, And also um, cool just, tones are the new in colors, whatever one you choose. Uh, I know. Oh, good. I know. Well, that was sort of um, shameless um, free help. Well, I like by, to go, <laughs> if, if somebody tells me what the trends are going to be, then I want to say, okay, but if cool tones are in, I want to warm it up in a way. I want to yep. do this. Yeah. Um, did you ever have a look at sea salt? Because you know, I love sea salt in a master bath. I, I do love sea salt. It doesn't work with the rug. There's a little too much green in it. Good. What color is the rug? Or the rug or the carpet? Carpet. Carpet. It, um, it is a cream with blue and gray. Did you get a texture? Did you get a texture in it or is it like a, I got some (laughs) texture and I I will give a plug for Eatman's carpets too. They are a fantastic resource and they also have some in stock rolls, which make, which make custom, this is a custom rug because I have a funky layout on my floor. Um, you know, slightly more affordable. That's so. awesome. 
Yeah. What a good little tip and what a good little shout out. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. What? That's all the time we have. It's over. Well, this has been so fun. <laughs> I could talk. The last podcast I did, they ended up doing two because I talked so much. They split me. I love that. I, yeah. you know, you and I had so much fun that day that we were together for like six hours because we oh had two God. homes in a row. Yeah. We drove all the way out to East Ch- Chapel yeah, Hill. Yeah, Chapel Hill. That was so yeah. fun. But so you and fun. I have realized that as opinionated, strong, brave women, we could talk about all of these things. And it's I, what I love about bringing these kinds of women into this podcast is that We have a lot to offer our listeners, whether it's about design or real estate or mothering or wifing or whatever the things are, we're going to like tell you, and I, 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 we could do another two podcasts. You want to come back? Well, I mean, I think all, I would love to, all of that goes into my job, like who you are. You know, I always say if there were more women car designers, there'd be a place to put your purse. Right? Like instead I'm chucking it on the floor, (laughs) the passenger seat. You're always, uh, I don't want a hook on the back of my car for my purse. It makes me crazy. Me too. And um, I have that hook and it's in my kid's way. There you go. Well, and we have um, one of our Chapel Hill agents just got a new listing with a female builder. And I went, oh my God, it's going to have such an amazing system of storage and laundry room and awesomeness. Like I can hardly wait. So, you know, just the way we live is how we work. I can't, I can't keep it separate, which is another reason I like real estate, right? Is that everything's incorporated by walking around my neighborhood. I become a better realtor. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You know, um, uh, the Kathy Lee and Ryan Seacrest show, their, yeah. their producer Gelman has been with them since the early days of Regis and Kelly. Yeah. Just like our producer Britt. And she's like, wrap it up, wrap it up. I call her Gelman. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to stop talking now. Stop All talking. Right. All right. I'm well, so glad well, to have had you. Thank you. Melanie too. Jones, not the preacher's wife, but she really that's is. Right. And that's one of the best parts. She works with Sotheby's Hodge and Kittrell. Thank you for joining us today. You are Thanks so good at what you do, and I love working with you. Likewise. Thank you for having me. This was a pleasure, and let's go make some deals. Let's go do it. Let's crush 2023. I'm excited. Thank you. We out, Pod Posse. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this episode, please like, comment, or subscribe. If you don't like it, then f***